So today, so hello, hello, uh, everybody. Hello, dear game lovers, because we are talking about only gaming. So we are all supposed to be game lovers. So welcome to our next channel. Um, I'm Tanya Ku Akala. I'm a communication strategist, and uh, I'm leading the consulting firm. Uh, so I'm based in Benin Republic, working over Africa, really. And it's a very great pleasure to moderate this new uh, session. We will talk today uh, about how to raise funds for code using video games. So I'm surrounded by amazing game changers. Um, and uh, let's not wait in the, let me introduce you uh, first of all, Jay Shapiro. You are a founder and CEO of uh, UC Cool Games. Please talk about what you are doing, uh, where you're based, uh, how long you're invested in the gaming industry, in a few words. Um, sure. So. Thank you. Thank you for the intro. Uh, so, yes, I'm, I'm Jay. I'm based here in Nairobi, Kenya, uh, where I run the Nairobi Game Development Center, which is a community co-working space for the entire game industry uh, in Kenya, trying to foster this industry. Uh, and I run Osiku Games, uh, which is a social impact gaming company. Uh, we make games that make a difference. Um, and so we try and create games that, that are fun, but that also have a positive social impact on the player and the community around them. Great. Thank you, Jay. So Asya City Bay, you are the development specialist at Union Life. It's uh, still a great pleasure to have women, uh, especially uh, when we are talking about thematic like this, because we're thinking that game, gaming is only maybe for um, men. I don't know, um, because I, I, don't, I didn't see many uh, women in, um, this, in the gaming industry, especially in Africa. I will talk just about Africa. So what are you doing at Pune Life City, uh, Asya? Sure. Um, so I'm Asya Sidibe. I'm West African. Um, uh, and I lead the Unit, Unit Life Initiative. We are a United Nations initiative. We fight chronic malnutrition through innovative finance. Chronic malnutrition is a disease, you know, that takes place during the first thousand days of a child's life. So from conception to, to his second birthday, um, when he doesn't have access to the right nutrients. So the result of chronic malnutrition is stunting. Um, you know, children who are too short for their age, uh, who have a weaker immune system and who have also some limitations in their, in their cognitive abilities. Um, and, and as a result, children affected by chronic malnutrition, they fall sick more often, they have difficulties in school and they are less productive as adults. So we're talking about a disease that really affects our human capital in Africa. And at Unit Life, we're exploring how the power of innovative finance can bring resources to fight chronic malnutrition on the African continent. This is a disease that is underfunded uh, because it's invisible. Um, so it, it's, it's important that we, when we talk about chronic malnutrition, we raise awareness and also we, we look at the most innovative ways to bring additional funding. And that's why I'm here today. Oh, great, great. But I think that we will uh, talk about this uh, very lot. Because a uh, non-profit organization, as you are looking for innovation and uh, innovating event or uh, opportunities, or I'm, I mean, like, it would be great to talk about how or what kind of cause, as you said, mal malnutrition, uh, we can focus on in Africa. Um, after we have Julien Herbin, I pronounce very well, yeah. <laughs> because it's French, first of all. Okay, because we are, when we are speaking uh, English, sometimes... Uh, we tend to uh, say Herbin, but it's not Herbin. So Julien Herbin, voilà. Co-founder and CEO of K4 Games. So Julien, you are invested in the um, uh, gaming industry for 12 years, I think. So please, let's introduce yourself. Thanks, Tanya, too. Thanks for this uh, intro. Thanks for, for having me. Great pleasure to be a part of this panel. Um, and uh, to see uh, how you have come. Uh, so, uh, indeed, my name is uh, Julien Herbin in French. Uh, I am French, uh, but I live in, uh, in West Africa, more specifically in Dakar, Senegal. 
Uh, I've, uh, I've been in the game industry since uh, 2007 when I ent entered Ubisoft as a programmer. I've stayed uh, at Ubisoft working for different studios uh, across the world, uh, in, in France, Canada, even China. Um, on producing games for different kinds of uh, platforms, consoles, mobile, uh, and PC. And uh, last year, I moved uh, with my family, uh, mostly for family reasons, because my, my wife is working for, for, for NGO uh, on the topic of, of malnutrition. Uh, so we moved to, to Dakar, and I realized that uh, there were you know, um, uh, young, uh, talented people here uh, be it artists, programmers, and it was a, a, a great opportunity to to found a, a studio. So uh, I founded the Kaifo last year. Kaifo in in Wolof means uh, come play. Uh, we produce uh, games for mobile. Uh, most of them are set in African context, and uh, all of them are non-violent. Uh, and um, and one game we have. Uh, uh, produced and released uh, this summer. It's called Clean My Beach. Uh, it's about uh, environment protection. You can see it behind here. <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, we're trying to make uh, games that are fun, kind of like Jay, <laughs> that are fun, but uh, carry, uh, you know, uh, values and uh, are trying to raise awareness on, on some uh, aspects of life. <laughs> Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Um, I think that's so much sharing experience. Um, so uh, we have uh, for the last speaker, Carl Molan, Molan, this is right, Molan, uh, who yeah. are the operation manager at EcoBank Foundation. So um, i really uh, curious to know how EcoBank can be interested in gaming industry or maybe in gaming charity because this is what we are we are going to talk about. So it's well um I am Carl Malan, as you said, work for EcoBank Foundation and we are always interested in learning. And when we started to think about what would be the best way for us to continue to think about areas where we don't usually go. And when Asia spoke about the opportunity with Sadiq, I'd say well it's a perfect one because we will learn from it understand a little bit better and see how we can actually find ways of collaborating. Great, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. So we will start the discussion. Um, I will just make a very quick introduction. So to just remind about the subject, the thematic. So uh, I will uh, uh, recall the, the thematic. So how to raise funds for calls using video games. So clearly uh, we all know that it's very hard to imagine a misunderstood industry as the uh, then gaming uh, uh, so stereotypes tell you that it's the niche hobby for a geeky minority and that we still underestimate the potential of the gaming industry so uh, we have great initiative today uh, as Feja um, with the goal to uh, build an ideal ecosystem to be put in place for the continent so the video game industry is bowling and is bringing very uh, great economic social opportunities uh, in Africa. Great change also, uh, first of all, because there is a real democratization of the digital, uh, so it helps. So we are still uh, learning how gaming can be an amazing tool also uh, for economic and social, and social changes. So according to an article uh, from the N tech food, uh, tech for, for good, sorry. We can afford that the rise of the live stream combined with the growing popularity and widespread appeal of video games has created an attractive new opportunity for charities and gaming. So definitely video game streaming uh, might be um, the future of philanthropy and uh, or fundraising. So in this panel, uh, we will um, it will be an opportunity to break down the concept of gaming fundraisers, um, what they are, uh, what they are, how organizations have used them in the past. So, uh, Julian, I think that you, uh, Julian and Jay have so to share about this, and how a charitable organization can raise money uh, with them. So, we review the needs of Africa 
clearly and all the solutions that can be work in Africa with our realities. So I will start first of all with uh, Julian. Uh, I, I, you, you said that you have many uh, experience to share about, uh, first of all, initiative uh, to, to raise money uh, using video games. So can you give your definition or explain what a game fundraiser? So everybody can understand what it is clearly, how it's possible to uh, raise money uh, uh, through uh, gaming fundraiser. And uh, when did you heard about this uh, innovative, um, uh, I would say, uh, uh, action opportunities? Um, so tell me. Well, actually, I, I might not be the best person to, to talk about this subject because uh, for Clean My Beach, we kind of uh, self-founded the, the, the project. Uh, so we didn't work uh, with the uh, founders to, to, to produce the game. I can speak uh, as, a, as a game studio uh, that is uh, trying to make games uh, that with a theme that connects to charity in a way that uh, it's trying to raise awareness on, on some topics. But I don't have the keys, you know, to to uh, to get to funding a project. I don't know if it, if it, if Jay, for instance, has worked with the with the charity funders, for instance. Maybe uh, you have more insights. Yes, of course, because of clearly the first of all, it's important to uh, to to really define clearly because I think that people. Uh, uh, who are uh, listening to us want to know exactly what uh, gaming fundraiser is to be. So Jay. So I'll, yeah, sure. I'll jump in there. So absolutely, gaming is a is a huge component of fundraising already. Um, I, I read a statistic that in the United States last year, twelve percent of all charity fundraising uh, that happened last year was done in connection with uh, gaming. Um, and you mentioned live streaming. Live streams are, have essentially become the, the telethons of the 21st century, uh, if you will. Um, in just doing some research for, for this talk, um, I found over half a billion dollars uh, that had been declared in fundraising efforts connected to video games uh, through either a, a combination of three things, really live streaming, uh, sales of digital goods, um, for charitable purposes, or donations directly through the games or games created for the purposes of fundraising. Um, those are sort of three different mechanisms that, that seem to have been used. Um, and, and in terms of your question of relevance in Africa, uh, I, I think absolutely this is probably more relevant in Africa than anywhere else in the world. Um, in Sub-Saharan Africa, we already have 350 million connected smartphones, people on the internet through smartphones, which is more than all of the US, Mexico, and Canada combined. Um, and in Africa, that's growing at 20% year over year before COVID. Uh, in the US, it was growing at 2% year over year. So in terms of uh, a potential audience here, uh, it is larger than it is in Europe uh, or in the North America. It is younger than it is in those markets. And there are more active NGOs here than there are in those markets. So uh, there's both demand side and supply side, huge opportunities. Great, thank you, thank you, Jay. But I, I want to know, Asia, um, when did you heard about gaming fundraiser? Is it the first time that you heard about this innovative uh, concept? I was looking for the word, but this is a, a new concept. So, uh, did you heard about it? Did you uh, uh, do, do you have, do you know such a story of uh, gaming fundraising or fundraiser? Uh, you want to share with us, or maybe Carl? Look, yeah, sure. I mean, to me, gaming fundraising, you know, it, it really refers to the to the power of the gaming industry, right? Bring the gamers, like a world of interconnected people, I would say, to participate even more to global development challenges. So I think, I think what is most interesting is the the, the population, the people who are playing. These are people driven by innovation, you know, 
these are probably some of the most connected people in the world. And when you talk about being interconnected, then you can think about how you use the power of those connections to actually make a difference and address some of the challenges that we have on the continent. So I think, yes, it has started globally and it's very exciting. Even in Africa, like Jay said, there are already a few uh, initiatives. Uh, I'm based in Paris and a couple of months ago, um, the, the Z event raised 5 million euros for Amnesty International. So through actually, I think Twitch, Twitch uh, streaming. So there is a huge potential. I mean, we can talk about it through this panel and, yeah. and obviously it's very exciting. Okay, great. Uh, why I ask this question? Because, you know, we have the Anglophone Africa and Anglophone Africa. So we, we know that sometimes about gaming, there is a little gap because uh, Africa, the two Africa are growing not at the same, uh, I would say, uh, as quick as they are. Um, each, are uh, if the, each side are growing differently. So uh, when we are talking today about raising funds with video games clearly when many people don't know about the history uh, because we are we, we say that the gaming industry is very misunderstood uh gaming is a very big tool we know that um so carl uh, as you are working uh, at ecobank foundation financial i know that ecobank is very invested in the digital sector uh, right now so what do you think about that how people we uh, um, they will um, adapt to this concept, how people will accept this concept. Uh, will it be a way to uh, understand clearly that video games is a very, uh, is all with a great potential, clearly? Well, the potential actually lies in all the people that are making the games. And if we're looking at the young population that we want to serve through the gaming industry, they need to have actually brains at work. So bringing chronic malnutrition into this debate is extremely important because the creativity that we speak about, the innovation that we speak about, needs well-functioning brains. So every industry needs to find a way to ensure that it is sustainable. And the sustainability of industry means that you need brains, brain power, but also you need people that have actually been able to go to school, been able to learn even in the, in the streets of the different cities that we have, so that the jobs are created. Because eventually we need to think about this as actually as an in industry that is creating jobs. And these jobs require the brain power to deliver. When we speak about 250 million connected cell phone, smartphone on the continent, which is growing at 20%, I see this technically as $250 million. If everyone that has a connected cell phone is willing to donate a dollar, that money, can serve the purpose at the same time of improving the gaming industry, but also resolving some of the challenges that this industry will face. Eventually, you can't just have people that are playing games all, the, all day. You need to have people that are actually contributing to the transformation of the continent. And this is where I see the connection between the two. Great. And you are answering uh, my, my second question, that was why the concept of gaming's charity is a real opportunity for Africa gaming industry. So clearly, uh, gaming is a very big solution. It's a really a great opportunity to solve our problems, to solve our issues, and to face um, social um, challenges, uh, clearly. So uh, Jay, or maybe Julian, uh, how do you think that gaming, no, how do you think not, but how gaming fundraisers are organized? Just very straight, uh, how people are organizing. You said, Jay, that uh, there, there is three ways um, to, to organize through streaming, I think, uh, to selling goods. Uh, and the third, maybe can you just go deeply um, about this to explain? Sure. If, if, if yeah, so the, as I was saying, sorry, yeah. So the, as I was saying, the, the three ways are the live streaming, digital goods, and games that are actually have fundraising built into the, the game of what we would call a bespoke game. And I'll give you one example of each one. So um, in, the, in the custom game idea that I mentioned, we did a game earlier this year with an NGO here called Seed Balls that is focused on reforestation in Kenya. 
Uh, deforestation is, is a huge problem here because of people cutting down trees for, for charcoal, for urbanization, development, range land, that sort of thing. Um, and so they have a, a, a interesting innovation for planting large numbers of trees by dropping seeds uh, out of an airplane uh, wrapped in little charcoal balls. Um, and they need to educate people about how their system works, but they also need to raise money, uh, as many nonprofits do. Um, and so we built a game for them that is, uh, first and foremost, like all games, must be fun and, and motivating, where you fly a little plane in the game on your mobile phone, you try and hit the targets and drop the seeds to plant the trees. And then at the end of the game, uh, we say, congratulations, you planted 347 virtual trees. Uh, now, would you like to convert those into real trees? Um, and you can click a button and donate 347 Kenya shillings, which is about $4. Um, and uh, they'll actually, that actually buy seeds to plant real trees. Um, and as far as we know from what we've heard is this is the only time video games have been used to plant actual trees uh, and do reforestation. So, so that's really an example of the third case. Uh, the digital goods example um, is through a game called Fortnite uh, as one example, where they took one of the characters in Fortnite um, and with working with the Breast Cancer Society, they created a costume that you could buy. For this character um, that was pink to match the, the campaign that they're running. Uh, they sold that for $15 uh, and they raised millions and millions of dollars for the campaign uh, by, doing, by doing that. And then the last one is, as you mentioned at the beginning, is the live streaming. Um, and there are many organizations doing that. The Children's Miracle Hospitals is, a, is the, probably the best known uh, example in the U.S. Uh, where, again, they're raising literally hundreds of millions of dollars uh, by encouraging people to do live streaming events um, and getting donations from their friends uh, to do marathons, to play for 36 hours straight or a particular game as fast as you can or uh, tournaments to compete against each other and have celebrities, uh, all those sorts of things. So like I say, it's, it's like a telethon sort of uh, where people tune in and watch. And of course, make donations along the way as you're going. Um, and so, yeah, so those are the three methods. And, and absolutely all of them are relevant in Africa. Great, great. Thank you, Jay, for such uh, details, information about how we can organize. I think that people who are watching us are just <laughs> really um, aware about what you are saying. So, Julian, uh, I would like to know if you think that Africa is ready, ready to organize um, his first um, gaming charity. Uh, uh, clearly, how do you think we can raise donation for charity with uh, African gamers, especially maybe only focus? Do you think it, it's, it's possible to be focused only on Africa? Because if we are supporting uh, African cause, <laughs> I think that, uh, we can do such an event to um, uh, make uh, everybody, African people, African gamers contribute, uh, first of all, maybe, I don't know. How do you think it's possible and do you think that Africa is ready? Yeah, absolutely. I think Africa is totally ready for that. Uh, we, we have uh, pretty much... Uh, uh, the infrastructure to, to do that. As, as we see today, we are able to, to stream from uh, different parts of, uh, of Africa. Um, it, it might not be uh, uh, ideal from every location, but uh, it's, it's building up. Uh, we, we seem to have a, a big uh, esports event, you know, catching on. Uh, Feja is, is one of the best examples of that. Uh, we can see also that uh, some uh, some esports stars uh, as are ra raising on the continent. Uh, I'm myself sharing um, the, our, our our studio space with uh, with esports team that is actually uh, competing in FEJA and 
they are getting support from the French embassy in Dhaka to, to uh, try and uh, build um, a e-sport professional team. Um, and, and, and these people are totally capable of uh, getting uh, traction, getting people to follow them and to follow their stream. And I think the, 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 the best way to uh, raising uh, money for charity is, is streaming. Definitely is the first, uh, for me, is the, it's the biggest thing. And as we have rising uh, star players or influencers in Africa, they will be the best people to talk about Africa, Africa's issues, and uh, gather, you know, uh, people around these thematics, and maybe have them act and and make a donation to uh, stream, uh, streaming channels. Uh, on this, on, okay. on the side, we also have uh, rising um, African developers like like us or Uziko, for instance who are already making games uh, that, that uh, come with uh, uh, innovation in terms of uh, collecting and uh, redistributing the money. So Jay talked about digital goods. Uh, we we uh, at Kaifo are facing some challenge with that because uh, on mobile, we are not able to uh, own uh, merchant accounts on, on the App Store and the, on the Google Store. Uh, so we cannot directly uh, you know, uh, collect money from um, from uh, from uh, uh, in-game uh, uh, in-game items that we are selling, uh, so this is an issue. But I'm pretty sure uh, we will have uh, solutions uh, in the coming months or coming years. And also, uh, and this is the third point uh, Jay was talking about: it's donations. Um, and it's a model that for uh, us, for Kim My Beach, we imagined uh, as well. But we were not able to 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 actually implement in the way we thought about it. But we thought that uh, uh, every, uh, you know, a player who plays Clean My Beach and is virtually uh, uh, cleaning the beach would be able uh, later on in the game to make a donation and uh, transform the virtual action into a real world action. Um, so it's, it's a matter of infrastructure and finding the right partners. But it seems that we have pretty much everything we need to to start, uh, you know, raising money for charity through gaming. Great, great. Thank you, Jillian. Um, Asia, I, I would like to know what kind of cause we should focus on in Africa, because when you are talking about malnutrition, I know that United Nations are a very great uh, organization uh, invested in many. Uh, and uh, uh, maybe today or in the next uh, few years, uh, there are causes that are more important to be focusing in Africa. So what's your point of view about this? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, no, I I was saying I think we have an international framework. Uh, so the global framework is the Sustainable Development Goals Global. We have seventeen goals in the world. And it's basically the blueprint to achieve a better world, right? A better and sustainable society for everyone. Um, I think, you know, I think that certainly for for Africa. Um, some of the goals, we, we, we're still catching up on some, some of the goals. I think some of the most important ones are no poverty, zero hunger, good nutrition, health and well-being, and of course, gender equality. Um, however, I think that, you know, the gaming industry has a full role to play when, it, when it's about, you know, partnerships for the goal, which is the, the 17 uh, sustainable, the SDG 17. So the question is, how can the industry contribute to achieving our global goals? And and what I want to say is that you know in Africa, we we the causes are, are huge. The challenges we face on the continent, you know, they're not for the faint of heart, right? But we do need to tackle them. So I would say the question I would ask differently, which is, what are the challenges that this industry feel they can support based on the industry's expertise, interests, and objectives? 
I would go with those challenges that have an impact on the future generations, right? The future gamers, the fact that we need to develop the industry. So we need to ensure that the next generations and not just, you know, 60% of the children, but all of them have the ability and the capacity to take the industry to the next level. So I would look at children's potential. How do we capacitate the next generation? You know, um, in Africa, I think that it all starts with our human potential. It's huge. How bigger could it be if we could tackle those specific challenges? So that would be my answer. Of course, chronic malnutrition, malnutrition, hunger, health, education. But I think it's, uh, it's all about, you know, uh, the human potential and what we do for our children and what they become. Great, thank you, Asha. And uh, Carl, um, I want to know more about uh, what uh, Eco Bank Foundation uh, are doing, uh, what causes you are pursuing, and clearly uh, what are your focus for the next years for 2021? Because we are at the end of uh, this uh, this year, so uh, how gaming can just help you. Uh, on what your uh, on your objectives at the ECOBEN. Very good. So you have uh, malaria that still kills a lot of under five on the continent, and these are potential gamers, these are potential designers of games on the continent, and that needs to be resolved. So ECOBEN focuses on on malaria. We're doing. We have a program in five in three countries, expanding to three more next year. We also focus on. Uh, providing digital literacy skills with, for young people. Because it is one thing to have all these different tools, but you need to be able to use them. And we think that education is a key part of it. Financial inclusion, of course, being a, a foundation of a financial institution is key. And we think that financial inclusion must be also for a purpose as a foundation. And this is why we think that it is key to bring those that are connected, to identify issues that they really believe in. Of course, today we're talking about chronic malnutrition. But it could be any other cause that they believe that we may be able to make a difference on the continent. There are many of them. But if we ensure that young people or children that are born can be the next generation, it's a different conversation altogether. Because the industries that we need to build, being in the gaming industry or being in, manuf being in uh, transforming our raw materials, all these different elements require el healthy young people. And my final point is that the young people of the world will be Africa. So it is not an African issue only. We have to make sure all these young people are healthy and are capable of changing the world. Great, great. Thank you very much, Carl. And I will finish with a last question and then we will do a round table just to end because uh, we are coming uh, to the end of this uh, panel. Um, clearly, uh, First of all, what are the great challenges? You talk about it, Asha, just a little bit. We have so much great challenge. I think that digital also, because as you said, Julian, the live streaming uh, case is the best uh, way to uh, make uh, um, gaming fundraiser possible in Africa. But we have some issues, you know. Uh, we are talking about Africa uh, as a country, but it's not a country. It's clearly a continent with different realities uh, side by side. So. Um, what are the great challenges um, and uh, uh, how we can have influential gamers in Africa? Because clearly, uh, if you want to make people give money, you have to, um, to make uh, people in France. So uh, people who can say, okay, you can give this money. Uh, so I need that. I, I know that the, the gaming industry is very young in Africa, but... Uh, um, can we talk about, can, can we um, affirm that we have influential leaders in Africa? So I will start maybe with you, Julian, and then maybe everyone, if you have something to say about this. Oh, Julian, you're muted. You're muted. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, I think it's a, it's a real challenge, you know, for uh, uh, fundraisers in, in gaming to be uh, to be identified, to be to be put in front, to 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 get uh, people to follow, to to get uh, to build a community. I think this is a most challenging thing for them. Uh, but uh, I think uh, as time goes, as uh, people in Africa 
play and and start uh, uh, mastering games and 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 uh, you know um, shine uh, maybe uh, on an international uh, scene. Uh, people will start looking at them, will follow them like kind of a, a sports team, and and I think in a natural way. Uh, it will grow bigger, and these these people will have the opportunity, you know, to to talk about these these problems, to talk about specific issues, and and to have people be uh, you know back them. So I think uh, uh, events events like uh, Feja, for instance, um, uh, are, are great to identify you know the best players, the people who are charismatic, who can you know lead a community. And you know, gather people, uh, put them together, <laughs> virtually in the same room, and have them, you know, uh, start a community. And and this can happen in different parts of Africa. You you stress that Africa is not one country; it's not one one culture. I think we have to play on, on you know on several territories there, and leaders will emerge. And and uh, and I think. Um, well, the 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 key uh, the key element is funding. So, NGOs, governments, uh, and uh, and even uh, private companies, sponsors, will will should get behind these uh, these influencers to 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 leverage the best uh, out of them. Can't hear you. No, no. Can you do your now you're muted. Oh, <laughs> I think that everyone <laughs> have the same <laughs> did the same mistake. Okay, Jay. So I was saying I was asking what uh, can you share about uh about this, about the challenges and about um, sure. maybe in uh, yes. So I'm I'm sorry, Julian. Uh, uh, you know I I love Kefo. I love what you guys are doing. But I'm going to disagree with you on this one. I I, I don't okay. think what we need is the is the gamer stars that we should put out front that that people want to watch. I think the strength in Africa has always been uh, grassroots, um, and a success comes uh, for Africa from Africa. Uh, using companies like Echo Bank, for example, and Kefo and Asiku that are that are in and of Africa, uh, you know, as just as an example, this conference, uh, the Fisher Conference, we're speaking to you today on Twitch and and using a platform called VMix uh, that comes from Australia, and and obviously there's money for this that's being sent away from Africa to Australia to pay for this platform, uh, whereas mm -hmm. uh, as an example. We've launched a conferencing platform, and 50% of all revenue that we generate through Gumzo, we donate to local COVID response efforts in Africa. Um, and so the ability to raise money for funds uh, supports the community, not just future gamers, and not just current gamers, but the ability to, to, to influence malnutrition, women's empowerment, climate change, uh, financial inclusion for the unbanked, all of these elements can absolutely be addressed through gaming uh, and not just through the superstars, but by ordinary people using local local tools, local companies, and supporting the local economies through a circular economy. Great. Uh, you, you, I agree with you, Jay. Uh, thank you for sharing all of this. And Carl, what do you think about it? Um, you, you can you see the challenges that Africa have because we talk about okay, uh, Africa is ready, but um, about the context uh, maybe in the different country, Francophone uh, Africa, especially. Um, what do you think about? I think we don't know much about what's happening in our communities and the and uh, on the continent. We tend to focus primarily on people living in urban areas, whereas majority of Africans live in rural areas. And to pick up on Jay's point, the grassroots element is essential. If we want any industry to thrive, we have to think about the majority and not the minority yeah. who's already connected. When we speak about 350 million people that are on smartphones, they are probably not in rural areas. 
because they still most rural area people are using dummy phones. Today we know that internet penetration on the continent is at just below 40 percent. So if we want this to be successful, we have to think about how do we address key issues that affect the majority on the continent. And those are the ones that are also affected by disease like neglected tropical disease, elephantiasis, schistosomitis, which is when you have children have worms and they can't go to school, chronic malnutrition. Those are some of the issues that actually hamper them from being the next digital innovator to, to produce a game that will make sense for its community. So I, for, for me, this discussion is fundamental in the way in which we think about the solution that we want to bring to the community, most importantly, the majority of Africans that are not in urban areas. Thank you very much. This is a really uh, good point to, um, to, 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 to talk about. And um, I think that uh, we have just a few uh, minutes uh, close to the end of this session. Um, we just uh, make a round table. So uh, I will start with Asia. Uh, please give you, uh, to, to give us uh, your last word and maybe talk very quickly about the launching, uh, the, the, the raising fund event at Unit Live in EcoBank. Uh, can you talk about it uh, a little bit and uh, when it will be launched? Because we have a, a question. So uh, I start with the first question with you as you are. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, sure. So, mm -hmm. so last points. I'm just reflecting a little bit on what uh, the other panelists have said. Um, I just also wanted to add that I think that, you know, there was a question on Africa is ready. There was a little bit of a debate on that. I think, I think yes, because I think that solidarity is a concept that you know we are born with um, in Africa. That's very strong. It takes different form, you know, from the diaspora who sends a lot of money home every month to support those who are left uh, home when they work abroad, you know, to your neighbors and family friends who come and share a meal with you every day, to the way we take care of our elders. So I think to the question that, about readiness, I think that the readiness is there in people's mind. That's what I really believe. Uh, I really do believe in, you know, global citizen solidarity and, you know, how people together can make a change. Um, now, they, they, I think, yes, probably there are challenges with, regard it, with regarding to ensuring that it's connected, whether they live in a, in a city or, you know, whether they are the last mile farmer, like we say, that the infrastructure is built for the nations and the stuff that Julien was talking about. But we do also have in Africa partners such as uh, EcoBank, for example, financial institutions that can certainly play a role in facilitating you know, the infrastructure for the gamers and, and the way this can all be arranged. I think that um, another point that beyond fundraising, the opportunity there is really talking about the type of games, for example, that Usiku, Usiku develops, you know, the opportunity yes. to communicate on the challenges, right? That's really important. We haven't talked about communication. Mm -hmm. You know, the challenge, for example, chronic malnutrition, it's, it's a huge thing. It affects the future generations. It affects how, you know, we can work on so many other issues, but if we don't, if we forget about our children and the way they, they will, their, their human potential, you know, we're not going to get very far. So I think that game, games and, and things such as the things that Jay, Jay is doing can really make a difference. How many people in Africa know about chronic malnutrition, even though working, those working in, in areas affected, not many. So. There's also a huge potential to raise awareness, you know, at, at a large level, I think that we need to explore. It's a real opportunity. Third point, the power of partnerships and this industry, extremely exciting for me. I know that already we have some initiatives that exist and that have taken place. I think we need to take it to the next level. I would look at the panelists here to, to actually help, you know, build something that would be completely innovative. What type of infrastructure we need to build? If we have to do this on the continent, you know, how can you bring a financial institution in? You know, how can you resolve some of the challenges that Julien was talking about? This is what we're doing. For, so to finish on the EcoBank campaign, this is what we're doing with EcoBank and, and, and Unit Life. Basically, and I'm sorry, Carl, talking for you, this is a bank saying that, you know, we have a network, we have an expertise that can be leveraged for innovative finance to serve a topic, chronic malnutrition. I think, um, that you know 
this is a private sector partner that understands that we're talking also about their future clients. So I'm very excited to, to, mm -hmm. to you know, continue exploring this with the, the, the industry. We're launching this campaign early next year on the 10th February. Um, it's about connecting people. It's called Making the Connection. So it really, I think, ties in nicely with the gaming industry. And we're looking forward to you know, integrate this industry to, to this campaign. Great. Thank you, Asha. Julien, what is your last word? <laughs> uh, thank you, uh, Tanya, too. Uh, OK, I'm not muted, am I? No. <laughs> uh, so yeah, um, it's, it's true that I, I talked a lot about the, 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 the eSports streaming uh, way to raise funds. And, and I totally agree with you, Jay, that this is not the only, only way to, to get there. I, for me, it, it's one of the immediate way uh, that uh, we we can do that we can uh, raise funds for for you know uh, charity uh, through gaming but also creators play a major role in that and i think the work uh, Cico has been doing and we have been doing to uh, uh, you know cre create games that are trying to raise awareness uh, on specific issues and trying to be innovative in the way that they they would have positive impacts in lives of people, uh, in the way that they will, you know, open mindset and the, the way that there will be uh, an action in the real world uh, beyond the game um, are, are very important and, and to, to uh, make a, a greater impact. I think we need to work together with people like uh, Asia and Carl, of course, uh, and, uh, and, and try to come up with a more innovative way to ways to to uh, collect uh, donations through gaming or to generate revenues for charities through gaming, and I'm sure we th there are many other other uh, you know themes uh, and and um, even ways to to to, to collect uh, that we we have not figured out yet. Great, thank you, Jay. Yeah, I think um, as I was absolutely right is the key point uh when she said that it's about communication and, and i'll add to that education um when covid first struck um the at least in kenya the ministry of health was doing all kinds of messaging uh public service announcements etc trying to convince people to stay at home keep social distance wash their hands etc and by and large the youth were completely ignoring it um and and have a huge distrust of government messaging as a whole uh but also of brand messaging um however they have a lot of affinity for hip hop for comic books and for games and so we created a campaign combining those those three by bringing together all sort of the hip hop royalty in Kenya to to teach hand washing essentially uh, and to make it cool and to make it fun. And I think that if you can communicate your messages and teach about disaster preparedness, malnutrition, uh, financial illiteracy, whatever the topic may be, and do it in a fun, motivating way that the youth want to hear that message that's not heavy handed, then the funding will automatically follow because the funding historically has always followed what's effective. People don't want to do fundraising through mechanisms that are not effective. And today, uh, particularly in Africa, but, but really globally, as Carl mentioned, it, right even before we had the call, you know, gaming is a $160 billion industry now. It is bigger than cinema. It is bigger than music. It is bigger than print. Um, this is where people are getting their their content their their information and there's absolutely the opportunity for uh ngos bilaterals un organizations to convey that information and do that education through games in a more effective manner yeah thank you jay so you say that uh gaming industry is uh i would say the the place where we can find Big money <laughs> uh, comparing to the others industry uh, definitely because you said that 
uh, gaming is bigger than music, bigger than um, cinema. So uh, if you want to raise great, uh, uh, I would say great funds for great cause, this is the best way. Um, gaming, gaming fundraising is the best way to 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 to, to do this. To, to do this, clearly. Do you agree with that? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know that's absolutely. why I'm in this. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Thank you, Jay and Carl. I will finish with you. Thank you. I have two points. Um, between now and the 10th of February, you have the opportunity to save a dollar a day so that on the 10th of February you can donate $70 each. That's a starting point. The second point that I want to make is that I'll make sure that this holiday in a few weeks when I go back to my family, I'll play video games with my children. Thank you very much. Oh, great. <laughs> this is a, a great thing. Um, OK, thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. I will just finish and con uh, make the, a conclusion and say that Africa is ready for gaming fundraiser, Def definitely. And uh, gaming fundraiser is a very great opportunity to solve social issues and uh, economic challenges. Uh, we talk about gender equality, education, health issues, so many things that we can solve through uh, gaming fundraiser. And uh, it's also a great um, uh, opportunity to uh, give visibility uh, to uh, the African gaming industry clearly. So uh, thank you so much again. Uh, I think that uh, we are finished. We are right in the time. Uh, so if there is no other question, because someone just asked, uh, we have just a, a question from Mario Felix. He wanted to know about the launch date. So we gave the, the launch date. It's 10 February of, of the next year. That's right, Asia, for the launch of the Fun event by Unit Life. Okay. Yes. Oh, I think that we said uh, uh, all we can say about uh, how to respond for calls using video games. Uh, um, we are all on LinkedIn. Those. So I think that if people want to know more about it, and I hope that there will be in the next month a great event uh, of gaming fundraiser. So. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you, Asha. Thank, thank you, you Carl. Thank you. Thank you. Jay. And, um, see you. Uh, see you. <laughs>